Hi everybody! I'm back! <laughs> I know, but here in Salmon Arm it was freezing this morning and we've been very busy um, getting ready for winter. When you live in a place where six months of the year you have beautiful summer and then you have winter. You get used to it and you prepare for it. So that's what we've been doing. And how are you guys doing? Are you getting better? <laughs> I hope so. Those of you who have been under the weather, I hope you're getting over it. And uh, those of you who haven't, count your blessings. And we'll get on with watering day today. Watering day. So today is my just water day. And as you know, I made out a watering schedule and I will repin it under this video in a comment section under my name. So um, number five, the fifth week, I have a six week watering schedule and I follow it all the time. I don't, uh, I don't like to use too much of anything, it's just how I do it. and. Uh, I want to share how I do it and how it affects my orchids. And on this side are all the ones that very early are coming into spike. They're ones I see spikes on. And on this other side are the ones that aren't. These are early. So the ones that are in spike, I can back off from the window a little bit. And the ones that aren't in spike yet, I'm going to move closer to the glass so at night it's a little cooler because to encourage spikes we like about 10 to 15 degree drop in temperature for a couple weeks. Two or three weeks, I usually, two weeks is good. So the other ones have been a little further from the crack of the window, I'll move them a little closer. And uh, then in the evening, I, I may open the window a crack, but I don't know. I have been for these ones, but now it's really cold, and I think just being near the glass will be enough for them. So, and if you're somewhere where you're not getting that drop in temperature, you could always use bowls of ice at night and <laughs> make a bunch of ice cubes, put them on bowls, in the evening before you go to bed, maybe a small fan going and uh, that might be enough to drop their temperature for you. If you're in an area where you don't really get that drop in temperature, you could try that. Sometimes just the change in the amount of daylight they're getting, they know they're not getting as much light as long is enough to change them too. Sometimes um, drying out a little longer than normal. So mine, I've been trying to get back to a Wednesday watering day, which usually isn't too busy of a day here. So a couple days I've gone longer. And I'm not worried about it because we've had rain in the evenings, beautiful sunny in the day and cold, but the humidity is staying around 60 even in the house, so uh, near the windows. So I do open a crack in the daytime, it helps let some of the humidity in and to close it at night if it's going to freeze. So uh, all these little things do kind of add up. So if you have trouble getting yours to spike and you have a question, I don't mind answering as best as I can. So uh, being I don't live in a different area, I only know from what I've read and how I understand it works. So, and uh, if you're hot this time of the year, you have air conditioning on. Some people have had their their growing season and, and are in their flowering season. Everybody depending on where you live. So, anyway, this is the watering schedule and I am on uh, week five. And what I do is on the back, I retyped this and put it in some plastic because I was getting messy. On the back, I make these little lines. One, two, three, four. Okay, Carolyn, you're on week five. Week five is just water, so this makes it easy for me. And soon, when the spikes are about four inches long, I'll be thinking 
of all my fertilizer days. Um, where did I put it? Hmm. Oh, over here. I knew I brought it in. Okay. Soon I'll be changing to what I use is this with the higher middle, middle number to help increase and help out the flowers a bit. So this is 18, 27, 18 and 2 MGO for magnesium. So uh, this is what I'll be switching to soon. Now the ones that I'm still nursing along, I'm not expecting to flower, they're ones I've just repotted recently. I'll probably still keep this them on plant prod 15, 15, 18 and the higher last number is for all over growth. So those would be the ones that I really don't care if they flower or not. So I want them just to get strong and then they'll be part of the family and they'll be fine. So that is the thing. So we're going to start watering. Some people have been wondering, excuse me, how I do it. It usually takes me an hour to two hours, depending on what I get into while I'm watering. And uh, being it's just water today, then um, I don't have as much to do. So sometimes when I have fertilizer day, I have this thing empty and I just quickly spray the plant over with a little water so they don't get burnt roots and then I right away put them into the sink with the fertilizer water or a bowl. I have some little bowls I keep and I also have a big bucket that I put some in which helps speed things up a bit. So today I have two sinks, two bowls and a bucket. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you what I do and in between I got some other things I want to show you so that'll keep you awake. <laughs> so um Hey, let's uh, put some orchids in some water. <laughs> okay, let's see. Well, we'll do the ones with the spikes because they're closest to me. And this is Moon Glow, and she has a spike coming. Some people say, how do I tell it's a spike or a root? Well, some sites say, oh, they look like little mittens. And I say, look, they look like little hands praying. But yes, the very tip is not so hard and rounded. It's quite a little more pointed like your fingers and then it comes out because then it opens into the flower. So <laughs> that's what I say. So uh, because there's no fertilizer, I won't rinse first. I'll just pop it in the water. So this one can go in this sink. I have both things full of water and I'm going to show you down there in a minute. I also have a measuring cup because I don't worry, I always get my leaves wet, my bark wet, everything wet. So I've just dumped some water over that one. We'll get a bunch in and then I'll show you down there. So um, let's see. Okay, now this one has spike coming right there. Where am I? Finger, finger, wrong way. Okay, right there, yeah. So, um, into the water. It goes in that sink. Now, if at least stick out a long way, I don't worry about what, what if they're that wet. You got lots of new leaves. Now, then I usually in my sink, I have a little tiny corner where I can probably put one into. So I'll put this one and it has a spike coming in here. Whoop. There we go. It has a spike coming. So there's a little free corner right here. To be careful with the leaves and the roots. Sometimes what happens is, and you'll see that, the uh, bark will float to the top and my plant um, is floating and but when I take it out because it's one that really hasn't stuck onto the side of a pot or something doesn't seem to bother him I've been doing it for a lot of years now so 
I don't worry about it. I leave them. And when I'm through, I get them all out. I just press them back in, make sure they're nice and straight and a little high above the bark and uh, less chance of rot that way. Some of mine are a little low. So, okay, we got three in that sink. And this one, of course, was the first one to show signs of spiking. And uh, I have one of the clamps that uh, Jack kind of soldered a clamp and one of the, the uh, stakes that come with the orchids when you buy it. But I still tie the two handles so I know it's uh, staying together. But those work good and I got a surprise way to show you after. So careful with those new spikes. They are brittle. I don't even try and put them onto a stake until they're at least maybe five inches tall. Because, and when you do, just slowly work them up to the position you want them to grow in because they will break. It's like a real healthy leaf. It's quite brittle and, and the spike is quite brittle. So there, I've got that carefully in there. One time I had the toaster on one. And of course, you know, I was running late and it was almost lunch. And I had the toaster oven on and I forgot and I put plant there and I burned its leaf because that's hot. But yeah, I don't do that anymore. Okay, that would fit in there. Now, uh, there's the tiniest little spike coming on this one. And uh, I won't try and even show it to you because it's so small. <laughs> you can take my word for it. So this one can go in the water. And I have room for one more small one. And yeah, maybe I'll put one of the ones that is in the spike. There we go, because it's a small one. It's fitting there. Okay. There we go. Sink is full. Six orchids. Now, I have a bowl right here, and I usually put a small one in it. So, we'll put that one in. And then, Sometimes I just run a little bit more water if I need it. You know, we we got this um, this tap. You know, we were on a roll. Jack fixed the oven, and then the, the tap, the thing that you pull it out with, and get your spray. Well, we can't get spray anymore because it broke. Of course, it's warranty forever, but they quit making it. So. Um, He's going to see if he can fix that too. <laughs> I don't know. I'd love a sink out in the patio because that's where I can and everything. And I thought, well, maybe I might get a bigger one for here and put this one out there eventually when we get around to it. So anyway, so we got one in a bowl and now this big bucket. I usually save this big bucket for... Now these guys are really in spike. And last year... They were one of the first. Let's see, I never know what way to go here. Well, where's my hand? Oh, over there? No, there. Okay. Where's that spike? There it is. Okay, there's a spike there. And there's a spike here. I let these ones hang down. There's a long one here. Whoop, long one there. And I see one coming, whoops, there might be two coming on this one. Um, I'm always dropping bark on the floor. There might be two, there's for sure one, there might be a second one, it's a little smaller. So what I do with my bucket is some of the ones that are a little taller, I drop in there. And of course my big traffic cones, they go into my washroom and they go in the shower. And I, they've never had a soak. Hasn't hurt them. But I have to run a little more water. What I do when I put them in the shower is I um, uh, go put them in there, give them a good rinse, then I walk away, do something out here. Then I go back and I've, I've got in my... Uh, uh, 
watering can, the mix of either Epsom salt or fertilizer, whatever I'm using for that watering day. And then I pour that over it and then I just let it sit. Then I always give them a little rinse after. Just what I do. <laughs> so now I'll just take some of that sink water and put that there. So now I have one small little thing here. I don't think I want to fit in it. I'll just leave that. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So okay. Now I've been talking a while, so I'll just set this for five minutes. And then if I start with the ones I put in first, they're, they're going to absorb anything that they're going to absorb within that first five to ten minutes. After that, it's just uh, getting the bark soaked, basically, so it stays good. Especially if it's newer, so be prepared. That will rain. Now, while we're waiting, I'll show you something. Now, I was talking to a lady from Ontario, I hope, um, about we should get uh, real creative and think of ways to reuse our spikes that come with the orchids, and I've saved them all, so I have lots, and um, use them for our spikes now. Because every time you have to stick something in the ground, into the media, you could damage your root. You know, why take that chance? So these, Jack soldered one of those things just onto one of these clips. And the big clips fit the bigger pots because they open quite a way. And then I always tie them so I know they stay. The two little handles, I tie them. So I have some real little ones for thin pots. <laughs> and I have some other ones for medium pots. And I can show you them on pots. But the newest one I've been doing, and I've been having good success. And I'm going to show you that. So... I was just out in the gazebo doing some tidying and feeding the birds and, and I saw all my spikes, I, uh, all my stakes, I keep them out there that I've, when I bought orchids, I've always kept them. And I, and I was thinking about talking to this lady, I'm sorry I forget your name, but I'm just with my hands, I'm sitting there twirling them around and I made this one. This is just two or three loops. Two or three loops. I'll throw, see if I can show you from this side. There's the other side. You can see how it's hanging on there. It works really good. So you can use it for your butterflies where your name tags are because you don't want to and it has happened. You don't want to Bend over your orchids one day and poke yourself with one of these spikes in the eye. It happens very easily. So um, that's why my butterflies are on the end. So they not only um, hold the name, they hold the hint of a color, possibly, and they protect your eyes. So they also help protect the flower. <laughs> so... Um, I thought, boy, that was easy, and you know, it's uh, it's pretty firm there, but easy to take off and on, move, and you can bend these right into the center, and then up, and then over. So you can bend them in to where the spike is coming, um, and then Jack um, had this little um, piece of metal. I think it would work with a piece of wood or anything. And if you just drill a tiny hole in there, and you can... Let me just take this. Now, there. There's the thing. Now, if you have something with a tiny hole, I just did that one with my fingers, but if you stick it in the hole, and then just go round and round, and round. Now I found, I thought, now how am I going to get it off? And I found I had to take my pliers and just pull it out of that hole. 
because it gets really stuck in there. Maybe if the hole was bigger, this is just something that, that um, had a hole, but if the hole was bigger, it would not um, stick. But it's quick, but it does stick in these holes. <laughs> I know, there we go. Then it slides off. So if you do make something, not that you can't do it with your hands, because I did, but this kind of makes a more. And then you can just kind of push the one that was in the hole, take your pliers, and yeah, I would have a bigger hole. And go like that. Now, any pot you got, like small or big, even this plastic cup, there's different sizes. See, look. It's so easy and quick. And some places where it's a little tighter, you could go into a different part of the hook. You can make maybe four, three, two, play around with it because, you know, really, why throw something away and why keep poking them inside the pot when you don't have to? So, I mean, I just made one here. I have one on this pot ready to go. This one I did three loops. Whoop, yeah. So uh, play around. You can, and the good thing is you can make them for any size pot. Just depending if it's not tight enough, take your pliers and squeeze it together. And and if your pot's wider, then you can open it further. So that's our first little hint of the day. So. What I'm going to do is just show you what I do is I take these out the water. Then I won't show you what, me watering the rest. I'll show you these and we'll do the other little tips I have for today. So, okay. So, when I take them out, I usually just drain them a little. And then I put them over here. And then I make sure I have a little piece of paper towel. And I make sure there's a point on it. And I go right into the center. Mine usually drain pretty good because they're, they're um, potted quite high in the bark. But it's a good, you know, it's winter, summer. I never worry because they're out in the breeze or whatever. They dry before evening when you might have to worry. So uh, then, now, right now I just have water in the sink. But when there's fertilizer or whatever there is, I dip my little thing in there. <laughs> it's just one of those little makeup pads from the Dollar Tree. And I wipe all the leaves. And when you're wiping the leaves, Make sure, this is a new leaf, it's a little softer than the others, it's growing big though. So now, this plant is taken to, to being in this pot, and I've had it for so longer. It not only has lots of leaves, the leaves are, whoops, <laughs> the leaves are getting bigger. See, they were a little narrower, now they're getting fatter and bigger. So, that's a good sign. So when you're wiping, look under the leaf very gently. Go right up into the tip. And if you see any little round kind of tan or whitish looking or brown even, that could be scaled, this is what you're looking for. So under each leaf, just to make sure, because if there is any around, they could have come off of anything, something you brought in the house, another plant and you don't want them to multiply because then you have trouble so the I always look under the leaf and I always wipe under each one all along the edge and I have my music going and I enjoy it it's kind of a relaxing time and the other place to look is also all in the bottom near the near the monopodial stem all in there just look for any sign now if you wipe them you'll notice a brown stain on your cloth then you know that you had scale and that's where it was 
So uh, this one's done. I usually have a, I put my swimming suit on when I do this. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Okay, put that one over there. And now this one, this was the first one to go in. So I just drain it. So this happens even when there's fertilizer or now the, the, the seaweed fertilizer. I always rinse if it's fertilizer with water. I'm not, of course, worrying about it. It's just what I do. <laughs> so um, this is Moon Glow. I've had her a long time. And she's got a nice new leaf still growing plus a spike. And, uh, you know, even ones you've never found any sign of, of a scale, you never know. They could have traveled off of something else in your house. Like, um, the, the scale, I want to do an outside tour soon, but the scale in the greenhouse on the, on the uh, citrus trees was, was so bad, and it gets bad because the ants, they farm the scale, it's hard to get them out of your greenhouse. I've done pretty good with the Dawn spray, spray in the ground, but uh, they get up there and then I have to take a bucket one day out there and wash all the leaves with some warm soapy water <laughs> to make sure I have them off before winter or it'll get worse. So this one looks fine. I always have my cooking tray here so when it's uh, draining then I can put it back, let it drain a bit, and then back to its home. But these ones are going to be set a little further back. They're still in the light. The other really important thing you need if you want to encourage spikes is make sure you're getting enough light. If you have to move a lamp there, if you have to move a, a garden spotlight, <laughs> whatever you have to do. We put LED strips around both bay windows. That works. At night, when it's dark, I turn them on till bedtime. Don't leave them on all night. They like to go to bed too. So anyway, this is what I do. Each one comes out. Now here's the last one in this sink. And this is the one that started to float. And this is also one that did have scale on and off. So now I see Quite often, now uh, let's see if you can see, I'll grab its core, sort of, its monopore, and I'll push, raising it so the, the, where the leaves are first starting, it's not too low in the bark. So that also will help us not to encourage scale down there. And then all the bark that floated, I just pick it up. Sometimes, if there's a lot, I have my uh, strainer on a handle and I just grab them with that. So, let's see if there's any scale on this one. So what I do sometimes, if you just hold it up to the light and you look underneath in a real bright spot, take it to a window. You might see something you've never seen before. But I've been cleaning these regularly and even though it had a air roots coming out here, it uh, still was a little unstable in the pot. But it does have a spike. And I've had this in and out of this pot, this particular one, because it's the one it did get scale. So many times it's still spiking. It's still got healthy leaves. It's never bothered it. The only way you can find out how your plant is doing is to check inside. And here's an here's a example before we go on to some other stuff. Now, oh, let me grab it. Oh, now if you remember, am I there? Yeah, hi. <laughs> okay, these flowers were on this plant. It's the last one I repotted. Now, if you looked at the video where I did this, and the video I did after, you'll see I left this on my kitchen counter. I did something I never did before. I put it inside another pot. Not that I don't like how this looks, but I was playing around one day, as I do sometimes, and I stuck it inside a decorative pot and I had it on my counter. Now, 
Our humidity has been <laughs> really unusually good, but it will get dry from the furnace coming on soon, but it's been good. And uh, I thought, hmm, I picked it up and I thought, well, it looked a little sad and I'd done the seaweed fertilizer and everything. So what do you do? Well, you check in the pot and what did I find? Holy, it was just before watering day, whatever watering day it was a week or so ago. And I looked in there and it was too wet. So I cleaned it up because this one, as you remember, it didn't have any good roots left in the center. And I, I trimmed any off that were there. They were mucky. So just, you know, if you're in a dry area and you want to hold humidity in, it does help hold humidity in setting it in another pot. But if you're in a moist area and you don't want to hold humidity and don't put it in another pot, leave it like this, they're much happier. So <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you and share that the only reason I, way I really found out because the bark will dry on the top. But what's happening way down here, you have to go in and you got to have a look. So anyway, I'm going to finish all this later and I want to show you a couple other things. So we did that, we did that, okay. This is the corner, cor this is the healthy eating part of this video. And uh, we had some spaghetti squash from the garden the other day. It was really good. And uh, I lay the seeds on a paper towel till they're dry. Then I fold them up, put a piece of tape on them, label them, they go in the garden next year. Same with, these are the large peppers. They're so good. They are so good. I picked all, I'm not going to grow the little ones anymore. I'm only going to grow, they're all sweet peppers. They're all large. And I took them all. I'm going to get you the bag that I'm using. You just bring them in, you wash them, you clean them, and you put them, chop them up, and put them in the freezer just like that. Look at that. These, I wish you could smell it. It smells delicious. And I use this a lot. So we have quite a few bags. We got a lot more. And I found the big ones were uh, fleshier. You know, there was, there was more goodness to them than the little ones. So I'm, the little ones are pretty, but next year it's just going to grow these. So what do we do? When we ate some of it, when I clean them and cut them up, what do I do? I save the seeds, put them on some paper towel, plant them again next year. And I, they were only because we got peppers from Mexico in the store one winter. We ate them, we liked them, we saved the seeds and they grew. Yes, very good. So, uh, yeah, so I have uh, acorn squash so far the large peppers, and spaghetti squash. But tomatoes, anything with a seed that you are eating that's so good that even if you bought it from the store, even though now we can save our own seeds, then uh, it's an excellent idea. Spaghetti squash in one pot, uh, you could grow on your balcony because if you just put a few seeds in one pot, Start them in the house, they're about this big, start them. Well, here I start usually the end of February, I'd say. And then they grow and then I put them in a big pot. Even a big pot, you can get quite a few squash just for yourself. So put them there for a minute. Okay, and last but not least, <laughs> we had a huge big frying pan, you know, uh, non-stick, and it kept. They lose their stuff. You can buy a real good one, but eventually, even if you're careful, they start to, and are you eating it? I don't know. I don't know. So finally, we broke down, and I bought a big pan. And this is a, this is a Staub pan. I didn't take the label off. We used it. But, um, so we seasoned it, and we've been using it, and it's great. But the only thing is, this, See, I picked this pan for a frying pan because it was high all the way around. And frying pans, they quite are a little lower and they have that pore spout. And I just want it high all around so I can 
simmer things in there. I made, I made homemade spaghetti sauce with our own tomatoes. It was delicious. And our own onions that you simmer for quite a while be, with other seasoning and then the tomato go in. But anyway, it was delicious. And so, but the problem was, even this company does not have lids for this pan. It's a panela pan or something like that for a special dish where they cook rice and seafood or chicken in one pot and it simmers in the oven on a real low heat with no lid. But, uh, so we looked all over for a lid. You couldn't really uh, trust whether you were getting one the right size on the internet because we, you, when you read the comments, which you should always do, but uh, you know how good Jack is at making things. I'm cleaning up out the cupboard where the pots go, and I'm saying, look at this lid. <laughs> it's too big for everything. I mean, we picked it up at a sale somewhere because it was a big, nice, it was an old tea felt lid, and it was glass, so you could see through it and everything, and it was too big for everything, even this pan. And, and Jack goes, well, what are you going to do with it? Because <laughs> we don't like to throw things away. We will use things. If we can find a way, we will find a way. So anyway, <laughs> he takes this big lid and goes down to a shop. And he's down there. And then he's there another day. He, he took the metal rim off. He took this metal rim right off. And then he... he went to his grinder and he kept grinding it a little bit rounder and rounder till he had it the right size. Then he put the metal rim back on and he put a little bit aquarium seal here, but this is the outside. This never goes into the pot and I used it for the spaghetti sauce. You would not believe how good this fits. So <laughs> there you go. You know what? It's amazing what you can do with what you have. So I have a splatter screen and I have this lid and I'm good. And this way we have something if we do see something at some other time because we do get around, then uh, we can pick it up. So thanks for joining me. And I know sometimes I'm away longer, but I'm busy all the time, like we all are. But I appreciate your company. And I'll have fun doing this. So, gee, thanks for joining me. And we'll see you next time. Maybe outside. Bye.